it breaks before the draft that what was it around 5 30 5 45 eastern time daryl morey's first trade as sixers president is actually giving up draft picks to get rid of a contract and uh, also trading one of the two remaining hinky draftees the only two left are Vasily Micic and Joel Embiid. Of course, they trade Embiid to get rid of Horford. It had to be done. No. They trade Micic to get rid of Horford. They give up a 2025, a lightly protected. 2020, one through six. Yeah, and then one through four, I think, for two years, and then it becomes yeah. a second-round pick. That is a courtesy, I want to say, Godner. So a 2025 first-round pick. Uh, the 34th pick in the draft this year, Mitchich and Horford, and the uh, Thunder send back Danny Green, who we actually talked about becoming a sixer. I would like to say that my prediction of the guy gone before um, opening tip being Horford, I'd like to, I had that one. Uh, Danny Green comes, Terrence Ferguson comes. My first question for you is Al Horford appreciator. In terms of our all time bits, where does that rank? Because it feels near the top for me. That's a you bet. That's you got to then you got to place it. I, I think it's I, mean, I still enjoy it. People were joking about the T-shirt. I think that it makes the T-shirt even better. Um, it's definitely a better T-shirt now by a lot. It is amazing that we talked ourselves into this. Well, it yeah. is amazing. I mean, <laughs> we gave we gave Elton the the Ricky Grace period yeah. for, you know, threatening to uh, beat my ass on stage. Uh-huh. Um, and it, it did feel from a spiteful place. It would have been awesome had we taken Boston's, you know, the bedrock of Boston's defense and just made it work here and made them worse in the process. And that didn't happen. Uh, we got punked by the Celtics again. Um, and it sucked. It sucked the whole time. It was, it was good for maybe like what a half of that first of opening night this year. I, you I, know, I mean, we started off four and right? So like the, there was nothing it was four and right? That I think the Portland game made it four and oh, seven years ago. Couldn't yeah. Try. I, but it was, it was just always, it was never right. It never felt no. good for any stretch of period. Nobody looked comfortable. There were a couple times over the course of the season where it was like, hey, this defense is tough to score against. But for the most part, they were slow. They weren't that physical at the rim. Um, they obviously had they had guys that could, you know, make individual plays, but like it never felt like a cohesive unit. And that's because of uh, the, you know, lack of foot speed on the perimeter um, and, you know, Brett's inability to, I guess, adjust whatever it is Horford was just never right and uh he looked pretty slow most of the season um I don't think he's like full washed so I think whoever wherever he goes if it if he stays in Oklahoma City I think he'll be probably fine and probably be able to rehabilitate some of his value and and get traded for picks afterwards because that's what Oklahoma City does right now um but I'm I'm happy he's gone I feel mostly you know when it happened it was frustrating to think about what could have been of just like this, th- this deal that was, that was done. So such a short amount of time ago on like a basketball schedule wise and to immediately be like, well, thank God that's gone. And it was, it was just a horrible deal. And then the people involved in that decision are, some of them are gone. Some of them are still here. Some of them are Scott O'Neill and will never be gone and they'll live forever. And, uh, just, <laughs> You know, <laughs> like a real. Vampire. Eventually, the Sixers will change their name to the Philadelphia Scott O'Neills, and we'll just have to keep rooting for them. But the it it for the for the first while, I would say until the draft started and we started going my way uh, of guys that I liked, you know, still being available. The Horford stuff that I was thinking was just like, man, this sucks. Like, why did it have to be this? Like, they could have just you know, they could have got Brogdon, they could have gotten Boyan Bogdanovich. There's a bunch of guys that they could have gotten, and they're just like, let's do this this thing instead. And it just was never right. And so it bummed me out that just, just reliving that for a while of uh, of what didn't work. But I'm ultimately 
happy that it's over, happy that we can move on, happy that Joel will be happy without Horford being there. And Danny Green's a good player. I think he's also like on the on the verge of being washed, but I think you know, we're going he's not going to play like 35 minutes a night. I think he's a solid stable veteran for, you know, for as a Matisse sort of uh role model and, you know, teacher and stuff. I think he still has some a part to play on on winning team and he'll hit shots and uh I'd Mitchich, rather have a washed Danny Green than a washed out Horford. Yeah, to, for sure. I don't yeah. think I don't think either guy is like fully forever washed. Um I think they're just like, you know, washed adjacent. Um, and you got to sort of monitor their washedness over the course of a season so that you can maximize how, how much pop they still have in them. Um, the, and the, the Mitchell stuff is a bummer because, you know, it would have been really cool if, if a hinky guy joined the team, but I'm, I'm glad he got used as a, as one final sweetener after all these years of, uh, being threatened to use that way. Come on. We know guys like that don't ever come over. Um, the, the only, the only sort of leeway I will give the Sixers for signing him. And you can't, we talk ourselves into almost everything. Even even deals that I wholeheartedly disagree with, for my own psyche, I talk myself into. You, you can't, you can't, we're going to talk ourselves into almost everything. The only, the only thing that I could give the Sixers a slight benefit of the doubt on is if Ben did come in shooting a little bit, it probably would have made it a little bit better than it was. But what we really ended up with was two power forwards and a center rather than a point guard, a power forward and a center. Um, You know, like Embiid and Horford never looked good together when they were on the court, but it always looked worse with the three of them on the court. So um, my next question for you is... Can I unfollow Anna Horford now on Twitter? You do what you, do what you gotta do, man. <laughs> okay. Whatever you need. Don't be do, mean to Anna Horford. She's, no, she, I, wait, no, I would do right. the same thing. I'm, if I'm I, not if my brother was on the Sixers and he was sucking, I wouldn't say that he sucked. I would say you sucked. I, I know. I would I'm, make excuses for him. I'm not going to be mean to her, but I will say, like, she didn't dive in with both feet here. And she, she like, she's one of those people like yours truly who will purposely antagonize people and then like shame them for being antagonized, Sure, <laughs> which is what she does. Sure. So I hope she enjoys Oklahoma City. I'm sure it'll be much nicer than Philadelphia is. Um, Everybody's happy. Let's move on. It was one bad year. <laughs> Get out of a relationship <laughs> Never as quickly happened. as possible. That's not uh, working. And it wasn't yeah. working. Everybody's happier. So yeah, I mean, getting out from under this Horford contract with three years on it is a really big deal. Danny Green's a, a $15 million expiring. This gives them a lot of flexibility, you know, both now, because I think, I mean, I don't give a shit about this, but like luxury tax stuff and paying more money there, but for like the future couple years where they can let Danny Green expire and, you know, target actually helpful players in free agency and possibly, you know, start to package players together for like another, you know, big th- three of that piece. If you don't believe in Tobias, whatever, it's huge. It's a really big deal. Um, I'm still bummed about the Horford thing initially, but I am working past that, uh, to be excited about Danny Green helping and not having to trade too much to get out from under it and future free agency possibilities. Do you so, agree with that? Yeah, I, I don't I actually want to add a couple of things to that. So I actually also don't care about what they pay in luxury tax. And I am not a like deep dive cap dork guy. But after the two trades and we'll get to the Richardson thing, they they sent out more money than than came in in both trades. And they're like a million dollars away from the uh, what's it called? The apron, which forgetting about what. Josh Harris and David Blitzer have to pay. Who cares? But it's a very important number in like using the mid-level exception, using trade exceptions, and not getting hard capped. Um, so as a strategy thing, it's good to have somebody like Maury in there who understands, like just in acquiring players, it gives them more flexibility. The other thing I would say is that it is much easier to trade a. $15 million guy and an $8 million guy than it is to trade one $29 million guy. Especially, I, I, 
Danny Green has one more year, right? Um, yeah, he's an expiring contract. Yeah, so so like that was one of the problems coming into this is that the Sixers really had very few tradable contracts, and you know I don't think they're going to trade. We'll get to Seth Curry. I don't. I obviously don't think they'll trade Seth Curry. But that said, eight million dollars for Seth Curry is super tradable. Um, a fifteen million dollar expiring Danny Green is tradable, and a, like was Ferguson makes six million dollars or something like that. Like that's also very tradable. So they um, str- strategy wise, they they did better when you. Um, when you think of the Horford era, is there one moment that <laughs> sticks out? Yeah, I mean, just any, like him spacing out to like 18 <laughs> feet on the baseline and, you know, front rimming a shot and then, <laughs> and then doing the clap, and doing that little clap. It, it really, when he rang the bell against the Celtics, it really was the high point. That's like, it. Like we were the only tr- one. We had the nerve to troll them about <laughs> Horford. <laughs> yeah. To call um, the season right then. If we could have just sort of bumped up the coronavirus to right then, that would have been, he probably would have been here for 20 more years just if they didn't, he never had to play. So what would you say, so did it surprise you that they, had, they basically had to pay a one and a two to get off of him? And then... Looking at the price, the Bucks paid for Drew Holiday, three ones. Uh, Portland paid two ones for Robert Covington, for Christ's sake. The rest of this offseason, I just think it paints it all. Like Horford was the guy that we thought, eh, we'll be able to find somebody that will just give us somebody back. You know, we, we won't have to pay that big of a tax. But we ended up paying a two draft pick tax. I think this particular offseason – is going to be very difficult for Maury to do anything else really big trade wise. Like Tobias Harris isn't a guy that's going to get traded like that. That seems almost impossible to me unless you're trading for an equally bad contract. So yeah, I don't, I don't think he is. And I don't, I don't want him to, I think that the, like right now the six are, and we'll, we'll get to it, but right now, like there's, we can figure out the lineup later, but like shake Danny, Tobias, Ben and bead is really good. And this is, we're back to the, like, Ben and Embiid first and second year when it was the two of them and then a bunch of shooting around them. And they just sort of decided that wasn't the right direction. The Jimmy thing was, I think, a worthwhile investment. Mm-hmm. And then that went the other direction and then the Horford thing. So, like, all really everything could have gone as it has gone with the exception of the Horford thing. And if they had just signed like Malcolm Brogdon, like it would be so much better, just so much in so many ways. But, you know, Daryl got here. Daryl pivoted. I'm saying the word Daryl so many times. It's I can't believe a, he's the, the president of basketball operations odd. for it's the very, Sixers. Very odd. Yeah. 